Welcome to Clone Questions Live. I'm Paul, your clone coach, and this is a show where we answer all of your clone questions. This is the first episode, the first edition of Clone Questions Live. So we'll let the, the audience start joining up here. On Instagram, I'm going to point, let's see, welcome to everybody. Join the audience. Link in bio. Post that. Pin it. Welcome to Clone Questions Live. I'm actually live on a different platform and also live on YouTube as well. Make sure this mic's doing good. How's everybody doing? Happy Friday to everybody. For anybody that wants to ask, ask, uh, ask a question tonight, go to the link in my bio on my Instagram page. You'll see a little tab there that says join the audience for Clone Questions Live. That's where you'll head over to the Riverside FM platform as an audience member, and you could actually call in with your questions. So I'll try to get questions answered here on the Clone Coach live uh, scroll here, but um, just in case, I want to try that that live method, man, where you guys could actually call in live. So I would it'd be a huge favor for you guys to head over to the link in my bio, join the audience, and for someone to test this out. Let's test it out. Let's see how this uh, you know, call-in feature works. Um, worst case scenario, I'll answer questions from old Q&As, but uh, let's, let's catch up to the Instagram questions and or comments here in the meantime. Hope all is well. Thank you. How you feeling, man? Better every day. For those who know I'm recovering from a little appendix surgery. Um, but uh, yeah, a week later to the day I was supposed to do this clone questions live last Friday. But uh, I was in the hospital, emergency room, getting uh, surgery done to get my appendix removed. So here we are, a week later, first episode of Clone Questions Live. Hope you're feeling better. Thank you. I am. I am. Yo, yo, yo. What do you do for mold? You prevent it. That's what you do for mold. First question, right? What do you do for mold? If it's on your plants, you got to be preventative with that. Um, you got to spray, you know, fungicides chemically and keep up your bio defenses as well so bio fungicides you can spray those a lot more frequently and of course make sure all your procedures are good um, your environmentals are on point your uh, equipment is being cleaned and your filters are being swapped on a timely basis um, so there's a lot of things that come into a effect when you're talking about mold because a mold spore is tiny i don't even know how to calculate it right it's so tiny so it could be anywhere um, I just did an interview with someone that said that the mold spore could live, you know, I don't know how you describe it, but the, like the crack of like your fingertip uh, or your fingerprint, how many mold spores could live in that little space or whatever. So when it comes to mold, you got to stay up on it. Um, you know, you got to take a full 360 approach when it comes to that. Let's see, we got a, a clone room is a, at an optimal RH. Let me see if this is. Make sure I don't miss anybody that's uh, in the audience trying to call in. Um, shout out you on the podcast, my guy, because your tech is so good and kind of similar to like, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. I see you with the support. Do you prefer taking cuts from the top or the bottom? Well, how about this, guys? It's Friday. It's Friday evening. I'm ready for a joint. Why don't we make this kind of part of the show? First things first, let's roll one up. And then we'll dive right into all these questions. I can scroll up and, you know, I'll get to everything that's on here. So if you guys are with me, let's uh, roll something up. I actually just got a gift, a little goodie bag from a very, very good friend. Um, Mr. C. Groen, I was trying to call in. This is my first time using this, so bear with me. Um, trying to see where it would show it. What happened when you tried to call in? I don't show anybody in the lobby. I show a few audience members on the Riverside FM platform. Or, yeah, a couple people in the audience. I got connected. Lori got connected. Ooh, okay. What do you do for mold? How to download the app? Oh, okay, so you might have to download the app if you're on your phone or something. But once again, guys, let's, uh, let's take a pause on the questions. 
Let's roll something up. I'm going to have you guys help me out here. We got some Oreos. We got some Julius Caesar. Stinky, dude. This stuff is loud. Oops. This stuff is loud, loud, loud. Motorhead. Ooh. Ooh. And some Yahimi. Ooh. I'm going Motorhead. I'm going Motorhead, guys. This is, uh, let me roll some of this stuff up. Let me see if I can bring up a nug to the, uh, ooh, sticky. Don't you love it, man? This is some of the best weed ever that still comes in a, uh, in a, um, sandwich bag, right? This is some of still, I mean, this is direct from the farmer. This is grown with love, grown with care. You know who you are. Thank you. I appreciate you. Appreciate the goodie bag. This is a little get well goodie bag. So let's see a little nugget here. Put it on this platform first. Motor, motor breath or motor head? Motor head. I got that gassy look. Let's see over here. No, you know it's not going to focus that good. Maybe if I cover myself. Who knows? But it's dank. It's got a good, let's see. Ooh, I caught that on the mic. Yeah, this is some fire. Fire, fire. My fingers are sticky already. Let's throw this bad boy in the grinder. Because first things first, man, it's Friday. Who out there is uh, going to roll something up with Clone Coach? For this first edition of Clone Questions Live. Yeah. Let's grind this up. Yep, had to download the app. Thank you for downloading the app, Lori. And let's see, a little blurry, slow down. Wedding sherb in your grinder. Nice. Well, join me. I should have grinded all of it up. Let me, uh, why am I being shy, right? Roll it off. Happy Friday to everybody. Thank you for joining Clone Questions Live. We're going to get into the questions here shortly, but I think it's really fitting. It's Friday evening. I'm sure everybody's had a long week out there grinding, out there gardening, dealing with corporate cannabis, dealing with whatever you're dealing with. And uh, hopefully we could get your questions answered here on Clone Coach Live. But let me, uh, let me just set the mood a bit more, right? I got it grinded up. And I'm a joint guy. I like joints. I don't do bongs very often. I don't do pipes very often. I used to, you know, but right now I'm really in the uh, in the joint phase. I don't do blunts. Just uh, some raw papers, some fire flour, a quick twist. And that's all I need, man. Nice and simple. I'm not a complicated guy. But I hope everybody out there is rolling something up to join in on this first edition of the Clone Questions Live. We'll get to the questions here shortly. It's just uh, first things first. I'm going to roll it up. Got a little filter going. I'm going to get to all the comments in uh, the Instagram comments there going. So I'm going to scroll up here shortly and get all of those questions answered too. So let's get some questions flowing. And we'll get to them. I'll try to answer all of them as much as I can. Go in depth as much as necessary too if you want some clarity on something or whatever. Um, so I'm not just going to spit out a quick answer unless that's all that question needs. But... Uh, Shit, of course, no lighter. God damn it. No lighter, guys. No lighter, guys. Come on. I have so many lighters, and I don't have a lighter with me. Damn it. Okay. At least I have some matches around here, but I ain't got that either. Will this thing work? No. That thing's dead. Wow. Wow, no no lighter, guys. Come on. Clone Coach is slacking. Unprepared. 
Actually, this is kind of just reality. So bear with me. I got to go get a lighter. <laughs> bear with me. Take a look at the drum set, I guess, in the meantime. Let's see. I'll be right back, guys. Give me 30 seconds. Yeah. Party foul. I know. I know. I'll be back. Okay, back, let's do this, back, check your pocket, yeah, I, it's where it usually is, but uh, not this time around. So I got some motorhead rolled up, to spark it up and get clone questions live going, first episode. Burn off the little excess paper. That's some fire. Good taste. Gassy. Strong. Oh, yeah. Hello, hello to everybody on Instagram. <coughs> it's choking me up a bit. Kind of tightens it up. It's good. Happy Friday. Welcome to Clone Coach Live. We're going to answer your questions. We're going to smoke a joint together. I think about the length, uh, the show is probably going to be about an hour, give or take. So let's get into it, guys. What do you think? I'm going to go to the chat here. If you want to join the um, the live audience on Riverside FM, head to the link in my bio. Uh, for those on Instagram, head to the link in my bio. You could join on the Riverside FM platform. You may need to download the app, but you'll be able to call in with your questions. It's a new feature. I haven't really tested it before, but I it's possible here. So, you know, I would I think it'd be really cool to call in hear your question live, and, you know, dive into whatever you got going on. Um, in the meantime, we're going to go through the questions that are in the chat. Someone was trying to call in. Um, you know, give it another shot if you could. I'm not really sure. What it, what did it tell you if uh, you dropped the call? What happened? So... on his bio so uh, we got a question here on the Riverside FM platform um, that's a lot shorter than the Instagram one so I'm gonna knock this out and then I'll dig through the comments on Instagram so if you got your question put it in the comments there we're gonna get to all of them let's see here how do you keep from getting algae on the root plugs tops that's a good question um, preventative is always uh, you know the, the first thing to start with right because like rock wool is usually cul the, the culprit when it comes to like showing algae on your cubes. So I've always, you know, done my zero tall preventative sprays on my clones and trays. And it's usually enough with that overspray when I'm spraying the stems that hits the tops of the cubes as a nice little preventative as well. Um, you also kind of want to avoid high nutrient levels that are really soaking on that cube that has a high intensity light hitting that surface of the cube, that combo um, is gonna build up a lot of algae pretty quick. So heavy, intense light and you know high nutrient levels, which your, your nutrients are gonna be up there, right? You're gonna be at two, five EC, maybe three EC. Um, but if you have high intensity light hitting that top of the cube and the cube is really saturated with high um, value nutrients, then you're probably gonna build up some algae um, fairly quickly. Right, so preventative is always key. Get that you know fungicide spray on your stems, maybe a little directed down a little bit on your cubes. I don't do too much of a heavy spray, but if it's there, um, you can do a heavier on it to, to kill and penetrate the cube a little bit to really kill off that algae. That's a good question, man. 
Am I good? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm recovering. Recovering from the surgery a week ago was supposed to be the first episode of Clone Questions Live, but uh, I ended up in the hospital with uh, appendicitis and had my appendix removed. So, um, but recovering r r really fast, I think. Um, it's a week later, and I feel a lot better. Not a <coughs> excuse me, not a hundred percent, but uh, I'm getting there, pretty close. So, almost there. So we're gonna go into the comments of. The Instagram page. I'm scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up to the beginning, so I don't miss anything. So we're starting from the very beginning. So keep getting your questions in there, and we'll keep we'll we'll get to them eventually. But happy Friday to everybody. If you're burning something up, let us know in the comments what you're burning up. Let's see here. Do you prefer taking cuts from the top or bottom? Top or bottom? I started answering this question, then I got derailed. Um, from the top. From the top is where I, work, where I really like taking clones. And I really prune my plant, my mother plant specifically, so that I have uninterrupted growth, nice on, on a nice even canopy on the plant, uninterrupted growth, heading up to the top, and those become my clones. That allows for a really consistent growth and a really consistent cut, and it makes you know cloning from that mother plant a lot faster too, because you're just coming right across the top, taking all of these really consistent clones off of this plant, and there's nowhere like second guessing. So, taking from the top, uninter uninterrupted growth for for even clones. So when you go to plug, you have really even trays. In the next stage, really even, really even um, growth as well. So not from the bottom though. From the bottom, you, that bottom should just be eventual tops, right? Just keep getting to that sweet spot of the canopy and that the bottom ends up just staying in that canopy with nodes. So as you clone from the top, th those nodes that you leave behind are all the next nodes that grow up to be your next set of clones. El Jefe, cheers brother. Uh, of clone room is that if clone room is that optimal RH and temp are domes necessary? Yes, because the the rooting process requires um, a staggering of your your humidity and not so much your temperature, but more so your humidity. So you you need to increase humidity at the beginning stage of rooting and slowly decrease that. Um, once your plants are hardened off and ready to go, go right back into the vegetative state. So even whatever you consider optimal humidity and temps, um, your room is going to stay the same. So it, it would really only be ideal for one stage of the rooting process, not for all three, or for taking clones you know, from the beginning to the end. So that's where the domes become necessary just to you know, increase the humidity and slowly decrease it. Excuse me. Let's see. Scrolling down. Oh, Lori here on Riverside. How many times can you clone a mother? You know, in theory, if you're just really using it for production, it's every 14 days. But are there clones in between there? Yes, there's clones. So it's like, are you going to count that as a cloning session? Because there were some available clones that were able to get cut, but it wasn't a full cut sesh on that mother plant where you're really leaving it bare. Um, so the frequency, you know, call it every two weeks. How many times that could happen in its life? I mean, shit, twice a month, call it maybe maybe three times a month. Um, and you're maybe doing that for about three months max. I mean, the faster you rotate out your mother stock, the better, but you wanna find that sweet spot where you're getting like full production numbers out of your mother plants before you just rotate it out and replace it, because then you'll never really hit its stride of like clones per square foot of production that you're really hitting. So, you know, call it two, four, six, you know, 10 times, a dozen times max, you know, kind of depends on what you consider um, a clone sesh. See, I'll be more specific. Can you clone a mother of 210 years if you budget? What? 
if so, if somebody's been cutting clones and keeping a mother invades for 10 years, that's not true. Am I reading that wrong? I'm sure. I don't think I understood your question there, Lori. But like, are you talking like a clone of a clone of a clone is a mother plant? Um, if that's the case, then you may, I mean, the longer you keep a vegetative plant alive, the more it's susceptible to, to disease and, uh, you know, pests. So those things will make a plant's health go down. And then the human aspect and input and the variables of its living conditions is what will be the stressors that affect the health of that plant. So in theory, assuming that it had everything it needed and never suffered any stress, then there really shouldn't be too much of um, the strain degrading down over time. Um, but that's not reality, right? So hence the, the quicker rotation. And if you have something for that long, <clears throat> you should have put it through tissue culture. If you're gonna keep it around for years and years, revive it through tissue culture and start from there and you're 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 as close as you could get to you know fresh start. Aeroponic cloners, thoughts on aero cloning. Aero cloners, aero cloners, aero cloners. Damn, I gotta I I gotta get into those, huh? Who who thinks I should, you know, give some insight on these aero cloners? I mean and like when I say insight like more of a how to because there's general insight. I play with aero cloners in my early career, my early nursery career, um, but I didn't have like the dome, so and my room was too dry to handle the first stage of rooting without a dome, so I was already struggling there. Um, but I think the process in the bottom is you'll get roots fast, but the thing with aero cloners is that you'll have to have a bit more um, equipment like one or two, like a water cooler um, or a water heater. It depends where you are in the world. It depends on your room, your water source. Um, a bit more chemistry to keep the, that water clean. Um, and when it comes to transplant, you know, you're just going to have a bare stem with, with bare exposed roots. So you really feel the, the brunt of not having a clone plug um, to transplant into whatever medium you want to. If you just have that bare root, then you're not going to go into a, you know, a, a, a Rockwell cube and leave leave it. There's nothing to hold it in place, right? So it has to be either loose media or another aeroponic type of um, hydroponic system, whether that be DWC or aeroponics as well in the next stage. So if you're starting aeroponics, it's probably because you're going to go into DWC or aeroponics or loose media. Um, and you have the ability to have, you know, more equipment like water coolers or water chillers, water chillers or water heaters, and could handle the uh, the the necessary excess humidity for the beginning stages of, of rooting as well. So, for those reasons, is why I never really stuck with aero cloning. <clears throat> you answered all my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lori. Thank you for asking your question on this episode of Clone, Clone Questions Live. Let's see here. Let's see, I just started playing around with the micropropagation, the same patience. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. What kind of nutrients do you use? For base nutrients, I've used canna, canna cocoa, AMB, I've used uh, General Hydroponics, the Flora, Flora series, um, Athena, the uh, Proline, which is a base, um, powders or granules or whatever you want to call them. It's like one of each. Um, that's the last stuff I played with. Um, base nutrients are exactly that. They're, they're base nutrients. They cover you know the majority of, of what you need, but the real magic in healthy plants is in your biostimulants. That's where the real magic is, in my opinion, because that's what keeps a vibrant root zone, um, a plant that has all of its defenses um, working over time. Like it, that's what makes a healthy, ha happy plant, in my opinion. Veg bloom, yeah. I mean, any base nutrient at the right level and the right like uptake, you you really can't go wrong with it, right? So it's like. 
whatever, whatever your team is, man. People have different teams and whatever your team is. And you could try different stuff out and some stuff might make sense in one situation. It might not make sense in another. When you're not using a dome, are you still spraying the foliage? Um, yeah. I mean, for the zero tall preventative spray, um, dome or no dome, you can spray that. I'm going to switch over back to the Instagram clone questions. Scroll through here. We did the error cloning. What's up from Thailand? Well, yeah, everybody, please just just uh, send a comment in where we're, from where you're tuning in from. We have Thailand right now. So everybody can get a sense of the clone coach team, where everybody's at in the world. See if here we go. If we got if your plants stay in the tray longer than 14 days to wait for rotation, do you have any additional tips for the additional days? I do. I do have some tips. Um, every day after day 14 that your clones stay in your trays, you're going to need to increase your uh, maintenance of those trays. That could that's probably going to include something like spreading the clones out, so decreasing the plant count per tray, going from 50 to 25 or something like that to open up and let those nodes start start vegging because you're in the vegetative stage now um, so increase the uh, decrease of plant density so remove you know space out some clones you're probably gonna need a de leaf to remove that bottom fan leaf or two that was like the initial fan leaves from when you took the clone remove those and then you're now you're in the vegetative stage so um, more frequent watering a little bit more intense light if possible um, rotation of, of root drenches, uh, I'm sorry, root inoculants, um, foliar sprays, so on and so forth, anything you would do in a normal vegetative stage. But if you're going to keep clones around for longer than 14 days, um, spread them out and de-leaf them and treat them like they're, they're vegging. So you're probably going to daily waterings and stuff like that. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> Chicago, Illinois, we got Washington State. What would you suggest to help push rooting throughout the whole clone plug rather than just the bottom of the plug? Ah, that's a good question. The trick to that is, is to ensure that the cube and the plug itself is um, fully saturated whenever you do a watering. So if you're just either not watering often enough and the moisture eventually just drops down and that's where the roots are is where there's moisture. So if your roots aren't in the entire cube is probably because you're not watering the entire cube um, when you do your waterings. So where there's water, that's where the roots are going to go. So if your roots are only at the top, play with your saturation, play with um, how you're watering your, your, your cubes, and I'm sure you'll start to see some difference there. Um, it may be the frequency, it may be you know, a flood and drain style, maybe the amount of time. Um, you may, there could be so many variables right in every grow room, but if you want to fill up the cube with roots, make sure there's um, fertilizer, nutrient solution, water, all over those cubes, and that's where the roots will be. Let's see here. Saw in my buddy's garden a plant that had a white fuzzy thing on the stalk. Never seen that. With some black mold too. Nasty. Any idea? If you see black mold and you see fuzz, that's probably even more mold. Um, Clean. Deep clean the room. Bleach, you know, rinse everything down, bleach everything down. Um, change out your filters, change out your stuff, but on the plants themselves. Um, kill everything, kill the fungus um, with the fungicide, and then rotate in on a frequent basis, even more like biofungicides, and keep that rotation up to really keep your plant, plants clean. Get rid of excess humidity, stagnant humidity that's just going to be the vector for for mold spores um these are things you could just actively do to start addressing it you know is it going to be 100 percent? no because i really don't know everything about your room and your plants and i'm not there so but do these things and you know that's what should be should, should be uh helping there run hepa filters and proguard units yep it's these are mold spores and there's things that exist in the world that help filter mold spores so HEPA filters 
um, pro guard units, like things that cycle through the air and are actively killing microbes and pathogens that are floating around in the air. What IPM do you use? You know, that's a constantly rotating list of products. Um, there's botanical sprays like IPM from Athena. There's um, biofungicides like Regalia, um, Actinovate, Seas. There's uh, knockdown insecticides like Pyganic. There's antifeedants like Azagard or Azadiractin products. There's um, uh, mold spores that are bioinsecticides that are good for, you know, aphids and thrips and things like that. Um, so when it comes to, to IPM, you, it's, it's a wide range. There's beneficial insects as well that get laid out um, into the room that are actively hunting down any kind of live insects as well. So IPM is not a simple answer. And there's, there's different categories, um, fungicide, insecticide the bio versions of each of those, um, beneficial insects, procedures, um, you know, airflow in the room. Um, there's, there's so many things because pest and disease um, is the hardest thing to, to, to fight, really. So let's scroll down here. Everybody that's joined, let us know where you're joining in from. We're Clone Questions Live. Scrolling through the comments here on um, Instagram. I'm smoking Punta, Punta Roja. Nice. Shit, it's thin as fuck. Light and airy. What's up, coach? What's up? This episode of Clone Questions Live, the first episode of Clone Questions Live. We got a question here. Let's see. If a tray of plugs, rapid rooters, has a bit of mold growth, is there any way to rescue the clones? Is there any possibility that they'll root? So you got a couple different things going on there. Um, mold spores on things like uh, rapid rooters and root riots, you know, those spongy type of pre-moistened um, bulk bag type of cloning plug. If you've opened enough cases out there, you know you're going to see some mold growth, right? It's a pre-moistened um, media in a plastic bag that's tied up. Why wouldn't there be mold growth? And especially if it's pre-charged with any sort of, um, you know, biochar, you know, um, mycorrhizae, any kind of little pre-charge for your, for your cloning. If you have anything already charged in that media and it's pre-moistened and locked in the bag, yeah, you're going to get mold spores. What you could do is, if it really bothers you, you could fight it, right? Kill it with the chemical fungicide, like Zerotol or something, and you start clean. So it's like a pre-soak in there, clean, you know, kill off whatever uh, mold spores are there, and then start your rooting process. Um, is it going to stop you from rooting? No. There's other factors that are far more important that will determine whether you root or not. Um, and it won't be whether it came, the media came with a little bit of mold spores. So you still could absolutely root in those things. They're more of a nu nuisance than anything, but you could definitely pre-treat it as well um, just to know that you're starting, starting clean. I was going to say go with the motorhead. Nice. Yep, that's what I went with. What's up, clone coach? What's up? So we got a question over here. What about your mothers? How to keep them happy? You're protecting them against pests and disease throughout its life to keep them happy, first of all, right? So keep those things away from those mother plants. Um, plenty of light, plenty of fresh air, plenty of CO2, and plenty of food and nutrients and um, bio uh, inputs into that plant. And, you, and the plant's going to be in a vegetative state, and it's going to be happy as fuck, man. Like... Keep bright. It's summertime for those plants, my man. It's so it's always it's a summertime. So if you have plenty of light, plenty of food, plenty of air, plenty of sunshine, breeze, and the plants are just thriving and growing, they have all the food that they need. Things are clean. There's no pest. There's no disease. That's how you keep them happy. But you know, obviously, it's easier said than done, right? That's that's what being a gardener is, and uh, especially an indoor gardener. 
um, is addressing all those aspects to keep that mother plant clean. That green gas, yeah, where's everybody else joining in from? We're going to get to, I'm scrolling down the comments here. Sparked them up, just sparked up some ICC, nice. Already rolled and lit, homie. Check my questions in the comments back when you can, yes. Check my questions, a few comments back when you can, I already got to you then. I'm scrolling from the top down. What's your sterilization process? Um, and we're... If we're just talking like tools or or plants or what are we talking here? So Dope's Garden, if you're still in there uh, watching live, mind clarifying that question. Generally curious why most people are doing cube clones versus aeroponic cloning. So I answered a bit of that earlier in the aeroponic question. Um, I mean, cubes, it depends on your uh, the next stage of growth, the medium you're going to go into. So, in my opinion, at least, like, so if you have cubes and you can go into, you know, cube rock wool or pre-made hole, um, whatever media that's next, um, cocoa, what have you. Loose media, of course, no problem. You could transplant into that. Um, aeroponic, you, you're, you eliminate a couple of those options because you just have a bare stem with exposed roots. And no real base to hold itself up in. So it would have to be something like a DWC where you're putting like the hydrogen clay pebbles all around that stem to hold it up, or an aeroponic system, um, once again, like transplanting into the same type of media or just loose media, you know. So it, I guess it's limiting on some factors and it does take a little bit more input um, to maintain, especially at scale, um, thousands of clones and aeroponic cloners. <clears throat> Over too many pasta for a filter. I haven't tried that pasta filter thing, man. I got plenty of these little uh, raw filters. Let's see here. A little book of them. Scrolling down here, let's see what else we got. First things first, does cold affect? Yes. This, I assume clones, right? Does cold affect the clones? Yes, it, it, it prolongs your strike backs, or your dry backs, I'm sorry. It prolongs the surging of roots, prolongs the rooting process. It slows down your vegetative growth. So cold is not good. I think, I mean, with these plants in a vegetative state, it's like summertime. So think bright, warm, airy, breezy. That's what we want. Are there any additives such as humic or fulvic you would add Tip the initial plug, I assume, to the initial plug soak that would help speed up the rooting process. Very good question. Yes. Um, <clears throat> actually, the root inoculant that I use, TerraGrow, already has some humic acid in it. Um, but adding amino acids, humic acids, and fulvic acids will um, absolutely induce certain like hormones to, to, to start functioning, like the rooting hormones. Uh, plant oxins and things like that. So get them in there. It's not going to do you any harm. It's not going to affect your EC level. That's just part of biology, right? That's just, you know, it's bottled up biology. Um, but it's part of what keeps the, the plant root zone active. It's just part of the whole, um, the whole system that's there. Let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> Does cold affect the clones? Yep. Answer your question there. Let's see. Go grab one. We won't be mad yet. Talking about me not having a lighter. Rookie. That's, that's what happens live, right? That's what happens live. Party foul. Check your pocket. Let's see. See if there's any more questions. See what people are joining in from. How much longer do you, th you think this purple trend will last? You know, it could go on forever because <laughs> California sets a standard for the rest of the world. And as more of the world has cannabis as a normal part of their lives and their industry, well, our California trends have, you know, still have places to go. So I think it might be around for a little bit. Cheers, cheers, cheers. 
What do you recommend for root aphids? Literally just restarted my whole veg rooms because of infestation. <sighs> Raise your hand if you ever had that same problem, <laughs> right? Root aphids are a son of a gun, man. And they're kind of, unless you're really scouting actively, you know, you'll, you'll, you won't catch them in time until they're, you have this infestation to some degree um, to where you're like, oh, now it's the war is on. You know, the war against these aphids are, are, is, is here now. So um, a knockdown with the Pyganic is where I would start. And that's where I would saturate everything because um, it's fast-acting insecticide. Anything that hits is going to kill, but there's no residuals. Um, it has a really short half-life. And so that's like my first step. Soak, saturate, and spray everything with a Pyganic. Boom. And then, then it's just, your, you know, you got to stay up on your insecticides. You got to stay up on your bio insecticides. You got to stay up on your um, handling of your plants, right? And that's where the, the battle just keeps continuing. You can't really let off the gas at that point. You have to come and strike and then stay up on it because you let up a little bit and that infestation will come back faster than you think. Let's see what else we got here for Clung Questions Live. Thank you to everybody that's joining us, Clung Questions Live. Um, if anybody out there needs a uh, hoplite and viroid testing done, get a discount code. You can use my discount code on myfloradna.com, which use code CLUNGCOACH. MyFloraDNA, you get your uh, hoplite and viroid testing and a lot of other testing as well. You get a nice little discount on your order there. Let's see here. In your experience, what is the best EC to soak plugs, or does that depend on what you're feeding your mother plants? The latter, yes. In my opinion, and in my procedures, and in my findings, it depends on what you're feeding the mother plants. Um, that's how you, well, that's how you get the same growth out of your clones, same color, same vigor, same growth that you are that you were already experiencing on your mother plants with those with that same feed so whatever your mother plants are being fed and experiencing if you feed it the same thing then that's what you should expect once it triggers the vegetative process and it's done with the rooting process so feeding it the same thing is um, the best way to uh, experience the same output compared to the input Let's see, what do you think of using cow hypochlorite in your cube soak slash feed? Had good success with it. I've seen some people talking about bleach as, you know, the third option from uh, hypochlorous acid, uh, PAA, and now people are going to be using bleach to feed their plants. I mean, I guess at the right PPM, there's bleach in our drinking water or something, right? I mean, bleach at the right levels has a good benefit and maybe no negative effects. So I would say this, get yourself some uh, chlorine test strips. If you're going to be, uh, be using chlorine bleach, get your chlor get some chlorine test strips with some PPM markers and really see what PPM um, you're managing that. And that's even for, for your tools for like, you know, preventing, um, the spread of any pathogens or viruses or viroids from tool to tool, from plant to plant, um, using bleach. The bleach does dissipate, you know, with time, even hours. And the more that it's active, the less, you know, PPMs it starts to have. So it starts to go down. So it's even good just to have um, test strips around, even for um, normal bleach solutions for cleaning. What's your preferred EC when watering clones? My preferred EC when watering clones is the same EC the mother plants were being fed that I just cloned from. Have you ever had King's Kush? I don't know, man. No things get. I don't, I haven't. Not that I can remember. Um, if King's Kush is really just another uh, genetic that we maybe that's a lot more common than maybe maybe I have. <laughs> Burning of J of that Sun King OG. All right. 
What do you do to prevent H something V, uh, the new viral infection? Yeah, hop latent viroid, H, um, HPLVD, I think it is. But um, you prevent it by, by doing a lot of testing and you, it's not cheap, um, but it's part of part of business now because what is, what is an infected plant really gonna cost you? So relatively speaking, testing is cheap because you don't, um, spend all the resources and then have even more of a lack of production coming off that plant. So testing this first, cleanliness on your tools. So even like if you have mother plants, for instance, right, this is nursery stuff, one pair of scissors per, per mother plant. There is no swapping, there is no shine. And even though you have one pair of scissors for that mother plant, you're still using things like um, bleach, a Vicron S, um, with the proper contact times to keep your, your tools clean. So keep your tools clean. Um, don't spread, uh, don't, you know, cross contaminate from plant to plant to spread anything and, um, get your testing done. And once again, if you want to get some hop latent viroid testing, head over to my floor DNA, use discount code. You guess it. Clum coach. Let's see, is it true that you have to run, to the three cycles on feminine seeds to make sure they don't harm. I had an interesting conversation with um, a guy that's well versed with genetics and seeds, and I don't think that that's true. Um, I think there's a little bit of bro science there, um, but because it's excuse me, it's more dependent on that genetic. If that genetic is a poor genetic, or genetic is more um, prone to, you know, being a a hermaphrodite plant, um, the stressors that it experiences are usually going to be the triggers that make that plant express itself in that way. So I don't think there's any truth to having it run, you know, running it three times and then being that, I mean, it's good to do it. I mean, why wouldn't you want to really know if you're like going to rely on this genetic to be a staple in your production? Then yeah, that's your assurance where, you know, you've ran anything three times, um, you know, but Hermine is usually caused through external external um, stressors on weak genetics or genetics that are more prone to harm with those uh, stressors as inputs. Smoking on mitten cake, batter bread. Ooh, by sea junkie. Nice. Is all this info in your mother SOP? Yeah. That mother, I mean, my guides are as complete as I can make them. And they even come with a coaching call with me just in case I wasn't clear on anything or you had um, some questions for your particular situation on how to implement these procedures. Then we can hop on a call just like this and we get those questions answered for you. Um, but And if there's any updates done to the guides, then they get automatically updated as well. You know, because um, I will never stop learning when it comes to clones and mother plants. Um, so the guides that I offer will be uh, will be updated as updates are made. Angry Gorilla. You calling me an angry gorilla? Much love, grown me's. Much love, much love. Do you run hypochlorous acid like Clans from Athena or Flow from Drip Hydro? Um, no, I don't. Um, I don't. <laughs> you know, it's... Once again, you have... You can either go PAA, hypochlorous acid, or I now I think I'm hearing people starting to use a low dose of bleach um, as like your 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 fungicide, your preventative, you're kind of preventing uh, algae buildup, preventing uh, mineral buildup, preventing um, you know any kind of major issues. But you're in a preventative stage if you're running it constantly. So it's all going to be low dose, one mil per gallon type of deal, two mil per gallon maybe type of deal. Um, so it's very, very low dose. Um, so it's kind of just whatever you'd like to run and what, what works for you, man. Canopy management starts when you cut clones. That's right. That's right, it does. For everybody else that's joining, we're going to – I think I'm going to keep going, man. I'm going to get all these questions answered here. Let's see here. Trying to be like you when I grow up. I'm trying to be like me when I grow up. Evening, sir. Evening, El Jefe. El Jefe Gardens. Another member of the Clone Coach team. Putting these SOPs to work. 
How long do you keep the dome on until I see roots? If you want general answers, um, yeah, I keep the dome on for 12 days and um, there's roots prior to those 12 days, but there's a dome protocol and that exact dome protocol is what's in my clone guide. Um, but I, you know, they, they come off on day 12, um, maybe day 13, but no later than that. We want to give them a day or two of hardening off to the environment that they're going into and or in um, before we call them fully ready at day 14. Let's see here. Do you check ORP? I use an aqua cloner. No, um, I'm still learning a bit about that. I was asking someone what, what that stood for, um, you know, what levels you should look out for. And so I still don't know, it just triggers other questions like, well, what, at what level does the plant, you know, does that chemistry have any effect on minerals, on, on fungus, on algae, on whatever. So um, ORP is something that I am still learning about as well. Let's see, best clone hormone. Well, turn the bottle around and there's gonna be they're gonna look, you're gonna look at the active ingredient. It's gonna be I, IBA or IAA, um, endo three buric acid um, is the rooting hormone. Period. That's that's what's gonna trigger um, you know that extra rooting process in your stems. Um, there may be a third. Um, Acid chain out there, another abbreviation. I maybe with something with an N, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but those are the actual three active ingredients in rooting hormones. And so different products allow have different ratios: and sing, single strain, dual strain, multi strain. Um, but they're classified differently in different regions of the world and stuff. So it just depends on on the brand and the product and what's available to you. Um, but any rooting hormone, just flip the bottle around and see the active ingredient, and it'll tell you what percentage um, of concentration that active active ingredient is is in that product. So, spin the bottle around and pick your favorite. Let's see here. On my first set of Clone Coach cuts, they look amazing so far. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. I'm about to get a thousand square foot license to grow and sell to the new rep market here in Vermont. That's cool. I want to save as much as square foot for flour, so I was thinking about just taking clones right before I flip. People do that. Um, what you what you won't have is the ability to have like different genetics um, to rotate in easily um, because you won't have a, a stock of mother plants or at least a space to hold mother plants in, or even pop new genetics, introduce new genetics from other sources and put them through a quarantine process and put them through your, through your production cycle. Um, so if you really don't dedicate any vegetative space or mother space, then you really lose that aspect. And as a small producer, I think that would be more of your bread and butter. Um, so you could definitely take clones from the vegetative stock. Um, so you could just have like moms, clones, and then normal veg. You know, but I would still say dedicate something to your moms. Being such a small producer, you'd want to have your 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 edge being small batch stuff that you really can't find anywhere else, man. You know, that's just my thought. Heat mat or no heat mat for cloning? You won't have any negative effects using a heat mat unless you are cooking the roots at ninety five degrees or something, right? Um, but a heat mat in the low 80s is just going to speed up the rooting process. It's going to speed up the media drying back as well. It's going to help that evaporation happen sooner. It'll probably build up condensation in your domes at a more rapid pace because it's heating up the media, causing evaporation, and that evaporation's building up in the dome. Um, so, you know, I've never had to use them. You know, once again, that's more power. You know, it's nothing crazy, but then you have a bunch of plugs and sensors and each level and something else to clean and stuff. Um, so if you're in a warm environment and you're, you're okay, you don't need it. But if, like, I've had clients, like, in Montana in a, you know, cinder block building, and, bro, you, you need it, man. I couldn't even imagine, you know, the kind of weather that you're dealing with out there. 
you know, these poor clones, you know, I'm used to Southern California, you know, so yeah, if you need it because you're in an extreme environment, 100%, and it, and it shouldn't do you any, um, any negative effects, but it will change your protocol and it will change, um, you know, the speed of things. Let's see here. Clone Questions Live. First episode of Clone Questions Live. Streaming on YouTube as well. I'm just Clone Coach on YouTube. Streaming on YouTube. Streaming on Riverside FM where it's a platform where people can call in, but we're still working on tweaks there. So uh, people try to call in, I guess, which I really appreciate. It just didn't like prompt me or anything to like answer phone call so we'll get there we'll get there this is the first this is the first episode so que pasa clone coach que pasa raider nation 75 what do you think of adding perlite to the bottom of clone trays i used to do it um it's good to have just some more medium for the roots to grow into if you're gonna um if they're going to be in those trays for a little while like on a retail shelf or something like that it's a bit more messy um but i've done it before and you know I, I didn't find it necessary another reason why i would do it if like you had the full slab of clone media directly on like the the mesh tray like say a, a rockle slab or an oasis slab directly on the mesh tray then when those roots hit and strike they're ready just on another piece of plastic so in those situations, I would create a little gap of perlite. So when those roots were at the bottom of that, you know, mesh tray, they had another half inch or so of perlite to, for those roots to grow into. Just some space between, you know, the, the two trays and the roots. Do you test for HLVD? I seen you have kits online. Yeah, head over to MyFlora DNA, MyFloraDNA.com and use discount code CloneCoach for a nice hefty discount on your HLVD tests. And there's other tests on there as well. So browse about, browse around a little bit. Use discount code CloneCoach. What are your thoughts on monosilic acid like pyrocy? Oops. Um, I've never used it to, I've used it, I've tried it, but I've never implemented it into my, into my recipes. Plenty of people have, plenty of people have, they've all had their own um, degree of success with it and ways of using it as well for like stacking um, nodes or stunting growth at week three, whatever, but it's kind of usually when the growth starts to slow down, maybe just there's an aid there, um, you know, so, and it's widely used, just do I use it, and, you know, as a normal, re you know, part of my regimen and saying I really need it. Or missing out on healthy plants if I don't use it? No. We got Arizona. I mean, I'm way back in the comments, guys. I'm playing, trying to play catch up here. We got Arizona, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Burlington, Vermont. Taking Clone Coach clones in Austin, Texas, Austin, Texas, Ohio, NorCal, Seattle, North Carolina, Albuquerque. I can't read that, but I think that's Th Thailand. Um, Oakland, California, St. Albans, Vermont, Southern California. Let's network together. Y'all know. Let's grow together. Let's connect. Yep. This is the clone coach team, y'all. We got something in Spanish here. Let's see. Uh, Hola, una pregunta. Tengo unas cuantas plantas y últimamente empezaron a salir muchas misquitas negras. I would either gnats or, um, I would assume gnats. Um, I don't know all of my verbiage in Spanish when it comes to clones, but, um, oh, let's see here. Una son mosquitas, mosquitas negras. Let's see. I would say get something like Zero Tall 2.0 or even hydrogen peroxide to irritate. Oh, you know what? Here's a solution. Jabón. Jabón de insectos. Eso es lo que va a matar los uh, mosquitas negras. En contacto. So, no va a durar mucho tiempo um, matando los próximos cuando se seca ya. Pero si están ahí vivos y, y um, los puedes mirar allí, échale um, jabón de insectos en un botella 
y le haces el spray y los matas cuando los miras así. Insecticidal soap. Let's see here. Sounds like a milly bug. What's your technique for watering multiple trays? Ebb and flow or flood and drain, whatever you want to call it, is uh, the best way. Um, if you're still doing tray by tray, but just multiple trays, and I have, usually have like a bin or a reservoir um, of nutrient solution that I'm just dunking, and I'll move on to the next, so just a dunk, a dunk motion there. Someone said, whoa, yo, what's up? Uh, do you have a list of your top three sea kelp foliar additives? I don't have a list of my top three sea kelp foliar additives, um, but I need to make one. Um, but look, there's there's a lot of them that I want to try, um, and that I've been around forever because sea kelp is nothing new, man. Nothing new to the fertilizer industry. Um, nothing new to healthy plants, organic um, far, uh, gardening, horticulture, things like that. So. Once again, flip over that bottle, look at the active ingredient, look at how much uh, active sea kelp is in there, look if it's a, a, a straight sea kelp product or if there's a blend of some sort, like some humic acids are in there, some ful fulvic acids are in there. Um, see what else is mixed into that foliar recipe and look at your MPK ratio. Whatever has a higher MPK ratio in my eyes is going to be a bit more robust. So look at your MPK, look at your active ingredient and look at your recipe for your uh, foliar sprays, your sea kelp foliar sprays, and um, find your favorite. Whatever your favorite is, let me know too. I told him to scrap it on and start from scratch. Yeah, I'm, that was for a question earlier. I use a pro guard for the win. What's up, Paul? This is Mel from the Bay Area. What's up, Mel? I'm in Canada using domes cloning solution on cuts. Soak two days, then into cups and light feed for Ever use this? No, never use that. Let's see here. What do you think of soaking root riot clubs with aloe water? Um, if you're sticking with an organic thing and that's all they're being fed, then that'll only help you with um, increasing like the natural rooting hormones, but it won't help you with any um, MPK base or nutrient value. So you may get roots, but have purple or yellow clones. If that's all you're putting in there. I use Jake's here in Canada. Foliar feet as well. What are your thoughts on spraying foliage with lights on? If light intensity intensity is correct, does it even matter? That's a good question. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. If your your leaf temperature is not scorching, because if it was, you'll see you know all the issues that comes with that. If your plants are just happy and you're at an 80 degree room. You know, misting these plants with water that is, you know, 70 degrees, is that 10 degree difference is, is nothing that's going to harm your plant. The only thing that would harm the plant would be, depending on what you're actually foliar spraying, right? That might obviously be the issue when, when it comes to spraying with lights on. But just like a normal like sea kelp or a cow mag or like a little fulvic acid foliar spray, um, you don't have to turn off lights and veg. We got Lake Balboa, South Florida. Let's see here. How do you prevent clones from damping off like the stock turn into a ramen noodle, mushy brown noodle? If you're experiencing that, you're trapping the humidity in your domes for too long. Your room is too cold and too wet. Fix those problems. Let that dome breathe. Warm up that room. Dry things up. Solve your problems. Grab the free mini guide on clunkcoach.com to subscribe and you get the free mini guide and that's one of the major tips that are in there. Let's see here. What are your thoughts on, it's already been an hour, huh, Matthew, there's a lot more questions than I thought, that's fantastic. Let's see here, what are your thoughts on wettable sulfur sprays for mothers and veg? We're very limited in Canada, what we can spray. If you're limited, use what you got, use what you can. Um, what are your thoughts on wettable sulfur sprays? Yeah, use them. Just keep your, your oils away. Um, you know, heavy, heavy uh, horticultural oils, at least three weeks or so away from a sulfur application. And you should be good if you're rotating heavy oils as well. But if you're not, then that's what you use. 
Sulfur is a classic. It'll work. It'll help you out. Jose says, hola, hola, Jose. I left a question on the questions list. I answered that somewhere. Let's see here. Let's see here. For Clone Questions Live, scrolling through the questions on Instagram here. Bring my mothers in at night. My clones get winter sun and a light bulb at night. Feel like a caveman. I think we've all done that. <laughs> yeah, it's nice outside you know, during half of the day and you let it enjoy that and you're rushing back and forth to bring it in, in, in at night and back out in the morning. Who are, whoever was asking about wettable sulfur in my throat dispenses, disperses on um, relisted. See, team helping each other out, man. There's a clone coach team here, guys. Here to just make the best clones ever. That's it. Hey, Clo hey, coach, why do my clones take so long to root? You're probably too cold, too wet um, for too long in the early stages. That's what's going to delay your rooting process. So if you still get roots, just like it takes you 21 days or something, then you should be looking at the first seven days and say, you know, is it too too damp for too long and too um, cold? Because if it is, then it's um, going to hinder the initial callusing and the rooting process to really kick off in those er first few days. You use Clonex and Athena Cuts. There you go, man. You use them both. Purple trend as in everybody wanting purple buds. That's right, that's right. Let's see here. Raising their hand there. Pyrethrin Evergreen at three to five mils per gallon. <clears throat> Nice. What is a good IPM schedule? How often? IPM is multifaceted, man. I can't, it's hard to give just a simple you know, schedule, but foliar sprays three times a week. Um, root applications, you know, once a week. Um, beneficial insects in the meantime, you know, as needed. So just, it's multifaceted. I think, you know, I should try to come up with some print, you know, guidelines there to help everybody out. Um, what's up, Paul? What's up, Mel? Cool. Thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Purple is a cosmetic trait for most cannabis. Most, most, many growers know to switch up the temps during flower and turn those flowers from perp, from green to purple. Not all perps are true perps. Shrug. It's a cosmetic trait for most cannabis. I would say for yeah. Most cannabis these days, but not all cannabis. Fun coach, what is a good IPM schedule like foliar wise? Foliar wise, three times a week, three foliar sprays a week is usually good. What's up, brother? Glad to see you are better. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I run 0.2 mils per gallon in my stung tank always. Should I not bubble the chlorine out of my tap water then? Yeah, if you're if you have uh, tap water that it's sitting for a day or two prior, yeah, bubbling it is going to um, help dissipate the chlorine. Um, but I wouldn't bubble my nutrient solution because then you'll get fluctuations in your pH. For these questions, for clone questions live, with me, your clone coach. Damn, so much info, brother. Thanks for this. Thanks for joining. It's first first episode here. Get through all these comments here. I don't even know how far down I am with these comments, guys, really. Um, how much Clonex do you have to use? Enough to just cover the bottom half inch of the stem. Don't take plants in and don't come from a tissue culture, period. Good advice. What do you see in pH for initial uh, soak in rock wool? Rock wool, get your pH down to about 5.6 excuse me, even 5.5. Five. Um, EC, trying to match what your uh, mother plants are being fed. Portion of that for the initial soak and then bump up to what your mother plants are being fed. You just answered that question, same as mom, do you just took the clones? There you go, I've read it to the test. Let's see here. I've read to take the test from the, sh from the roots, okay. Excellent, thank you buddy, thank you. Let's see where we're at here. Wave to a couple people. Some support there. For clone questions live. Have you ever left your clones roots in water and seen massive growth? 
No. My father-in-law watching and supporting him, a man, clone coach. Awesome, man. Thank you. It's what I am smoking on Angry Gorilla. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never heard that stream, but I would not be surprised if he called an Angry Gorilla, you know? I could see that. Um, let's see. Any other clone questions? It's here. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Have you tried using the 12-inch domes? I swapped them from the standard side domes. I don't think I'll ever go back. Nice. I mean, obviously, you take a lot taller clone. Um... You know, you probably have some more nodes beneath that. And, um, yeah, you just have to adjust your shelving and stuff. But I think it'd be pretty cool have the taller dome. Day 13, I'm planting. Let's see here. What's up, my man? Sending good vibes. Sending good vibes back to you. You ever use Bloom with your clone mix? It's becoming a trend now. But, no, um, I've never used Bloom uh, for my clone mix. Once again, I use the same veg feed that my mother plants are being fed. Um, there is, you know, um, good thought behind using, uh, Bloom for your clone mix, I guess, right? With the extra, um, potassium and phosphorus there to aid in rooting, but I have no problem rooting with all the other parameters as far as temperature, humidity, uh, rooting hormones, procedures. I got my rooting covered. I mean, talk to anybody on the clone coach team, what kind of roots we're having. Rooting, getting roots is not my problem, so no, I don't. I don't use a, the the bloom mix for my clone mix. Use the wrong word, save. There's no saving anything in this industry. I'm not sure what, you, what you're referring to. What size pot do you use for moms? Um, it's varied, but on average, like a three gallon pot is usually good. Um, four or five gallons maybe if it's uh, going to stick around for a bit longer. Um, but bigger than that, in an indoor setting with a mother plant that's being rotated on a fairly decent um, rotation, you don't need that big of a plant. Um, just more to, more to manage. But three to five gallons is fine. I spray Zerotol and Oxyphos the day before I take cuts from the moms. What do you think? That's fantastic. Yeah. I use that mix as my dunk when I'm dunking my clones that I just cloned before I go to plug them. That's what I'm dunking in. So I'm treating it with the same thing the day of. So the day before in a foliar spray, you may just get less coverage. I don't know if you're really good at your foliar sprays and maybe not, but um, using that as a dunk solution the day of and fully saturating your clone bouquet, then you're ensuring full coverage. Calyx Crew Podcast. I just uh, did a podcast with Calyx Crew uh, Podcast, so shout out to you. That's going to be coming out soon. At Bay Area, your shit probably droopy the day taking cuts. Okay. Let's see here. Things on my clones look better than they have in 14 years taking your advice. If that's not a testimonial, I don't know what is, man. You know, just you got to look at things differently sometimes, right? And People have gotten by for, for, for years, but were they making the best clones ever? Hmm. Are people making the best clones ever now? Yeah, this sounds like they are. What do people mean when they are talking about callus forming on the stem when rooting? It's the first stage of rooting. Usually that it's like a hard callus. It's like um, it would look like mineral buildup that doesn't come off your stem or something that's building up off the stem, and that's where usually the roots start to strike from. Um, but that's the first stage of rooting, is that callus. Please save this live. I will save the live. It'll be on my page. Um, I'll, it'll be part of the episode. So this is episode one, so there'll be a whole series of all of these lives here. First, clone questions live, going on an hour and 15. I'm trying to get through all these questions. Awesome first episode. Hell yeah, thank you. I don't even know how far down I am to get to the bottom of the most co um, current comments here. And that's my Spotify randomly playing some music. <laughs> okay. Um, if feed is best from all platforms, IG feed is best from all the platforms in my opinion. Thanks for the feedback. 
sessions with the clone coach coming in a couple weeks. Calyx Crew podcast. Anyone else on the theater? No, I think it was like three or four. Hey, hey, dude. That's another one. That's five. Who's from St. Albans up in here? Scroll up to the top. We got New York in here. We got St. Albans. I was just saying hi to the Thai person. SS, SSFV here. San Fernando Valley. Got a comment over here on Riverside FM. We got, uh, let's see, just got my first clones to take roots after about four tries. Thank you for the help and tips. Appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. Thanks for the support. Glad to see you're making the best clones you've ever made. Let's see. El jabón, la reseca, el camparazón a los insectos y se mueren de recesión. Yeah. What you said. I gotta, I gotta learn my, my um, horticultural Spanish. What do you like? What do you like for an arruda inoculant? What do I look for in a arruda inoculant? Uh, for it to be complete, so to have all the strains of bacteria and fungi, and all the you know other beneficials like sea kelp, humic acids, uh, molasses, things that feed those microbes. Because if you have the microbes, but you don't have the microbe food what are you doing right and there's no reason why they can't all be mixed in the same product so that's what i look for in a root inoculant let's see had a great time talking kelp foliar with you yes sir i've never burned with an olive oil let's see let's see washington state that's because you a rock doggy thank you thank you let's see here what type of beneficial insects um i'm gonna butcher the names if i try to give you the names um, talk to your rep. There's really no reason why you can't talk to your rep or even look at the categories on a website. Um, but get something that's kind of like, if you, if you have, you know, fungicide issues, get something that's going to live at the top of your soil and kill all the fungicide larva. Um, and then your adults and stuff like that to address that. If you have a mite problem, well, get some beneficial mites that are crawling in your canopy at all times. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're fighting against is what you want to implement or, you know, use as a defensive. So, you know, depends on your particular use. Clone guy, let's see here. How long can you hold clones and dome trays before veg? 21 days, you know, with the protocols we said earlier. See, can you explain the best mother clone SOPs, like what you expect from it? Can you explain the best mother, like what to expect from it? Head over to clonecoach.com. The, the product descriptions are pretty good at telling you what to expect, but a quick sum up, you're going to get the best mother plants ever and the best clones ever. And I'm sorry if that's an old question or anything like that. I'm just scrolling through all of the uh, questions here on Instagram. Uh, let's see. You got my first clones to show roots through the root rights after three tries. Thanks for your help, brother. I appreciate you. Appreciate you too. Appreciate you too. Let's see what else we got here. Hey, my brother, how can I make the plant build a good spread of roots? Root inoculants, build up that root zone. Make the roots come alive. Thank you for the live stream. You're welcome. You're welcome, friend. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining Clone Questions Live. The first episode, we're going to do this every Friday, 5.30. I'm going to try to keep it under an hour, but, you know, the questions are here, so we're getting them answered, man. Thank you guys for asking the questions, and thank you for being part of the Clone Coach team and supporting Clone Coach. Um, can you clone directly in soil, or are inert media better to clone in? Yeah, you could clone directly in any kind of media. The The media the root is, uh, the stem is rooting in just usually needs a little bit more moisture to begin with, but still needs some sort of um, ability to to dry back as well um, the loose media all that you might deal with is exactly that the loose media so if your clone if your root zone isn't fully um, built out in that media then it might be loose when it comes to transplant but I've definitely used like pure cocoa filled up a couple cell trays and cloned in there and the plant will root 
let's see here. I just sent you a pic. Can I use those huge rooting cubes instead of going to small cubes? When people, I can't check my messages right now, Detroit Dank Boys, but um, I'll take a I'll take a look at that soon. Um, can I use those huge rooting cubes instead of going from small P cubes to solo cup to three gallon? Um, I would have to take a look at those cubes. So you're trying to go from like a P cube size to a three gallon or something, or like replace a solo cube. Solo cup, I'm sorry. I'll take a look at that picture. How was Washington State? I'm in Tri-Cities. Nematodes for fungus gnats. Yep, nematodes. Yes, absolutely. I skipped that one um, for beneficial insects. Um, once again, if you're dealing with fungus gnats, nematodes is another good, good one to implement. So big cube to final pot. Should be mentioned that before. I think um, cloning in that big cube, though, I wouldn't do it. I'd rather just clone in my normal cube and transplant into that because you're not saving time. You actually might be adding time to your process because how you can get a decent dry back um, and then the logistics of cloning in giant cubes, you know, 100 of those cubes, instead of taking, you know, three, four square feet, you're going to take what, 100 square feet of canopy, you know, so I don't know. I wouldn't do it. Thanks for answering all the questions. Thanks for asking the questions on Clone Questions Live with Clone Coach. Mm. Episode one. Episode one. Thank you to everybody that's joining us. If you haven't told us where you're joining in from, please leave a comment where you're joining in from. What's up, Great Beard Grows? How are you? I'm scrolling down all the comments from the very beginning of the live trying to get through all the questions here. So I don't know how far down I am, but I'm going to hit the bottom. I was told by Erasta in 1975 that lamb's bread was a straight to the ground re-rooting of the top eight inches right after budding started. Nice. Can I get a, I'm gonna cut the root. Let's see if there's any questions. We're current, I'm down to the bottom. We got Auburn, Maine. People letting us know when you're joining in from. EC for freshly rooted clones, match the EC of your mother plants, which would be a, a high or normal vegetative feed for your EC. How do you avoid keeping or keep from having aphids in your clones? Uh, stay on preventatives, you know, be a good gardener, man. And if you do get them, attack, attack, attack. It's war, it's battle. Hit them with a the knockdown and then stay on top of uh, really saturating, fully saturating with insecticides and bioinsecticides and antifeedants at your root zones. Let's see here. We got New York, OKC. Thanks for sharing your knowledge, brother. Thank you for joining. I think I'm wrapping this up. It's an hour and a half. I think that's all the questions there. <sighs> That was fun. That was fun. Um, so I'm caught up at least in all the comments there. Oh, shit. Oh, well, there's comments, questions, but I already answered those. Do you have an IPM SOP? No, but we touched on that a few times, so I do need to build something to at least give you guys a guide. Have you dealt with uh, hobbling virus personally? Yes, I have. Surround yourself with enough plants, you're going to deal with it. Thanks a bunch, brother. Thank you for joining on the other platform, too. Trying it out. You know, we'll work out the tweaks and the call-in stuff. And don't forget, guys, this is really meant to be like a call-in show. You know, that's the goal of it. You know, to use the um, the link in my bio, join the audience there on Riverside FM, and call in with your questions so we could, you know, kind of get more one-on-one -on -one like that. But um, this is the first episode, so we'll, we'll get there. No longer sweating a broken stem, just more clone opportunities. That's right. It's a good way to look at it. Well, thank you to everybody. I think I'm done with the clone questions for today. That's an hour and a half of clone questions for the first round. I'm going to save this uh, episode on my page. So, you know, I'm going to chop up, you know, um, whatever I can to make some content from it too. 
um, to make it easier for you guys to digest this stuff, getting some more value from it. But thank you guys, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. I think I'm going to finish this guy here. I think I'm good with the questions. I appreciate everybody. Um, I'm just going to finish this up while I'm here. If anybody else is joining or, um, you know, doing their thing, I'm just going to take a quick one. For the first episode of Clone Questions Live, that was fun. That was fun. For everybody that just joined or didn't catch it all, man, I'm going to have it posted on my page. Um, you know, so just search it on there and at your leisure, you know, browse around. There was a lot of questions. That was uh, just almost an hour and a half of, of questions for the first episode of Clone Questions Live. But thank you to everybody that joined. That was fun. We had people from all over the place joining us. But the Clone Coach team is real. How to clone without a dome and an arrow cloner? Get a dome. <laughs> Get a dome. But thank you, everybody, that joined this episode of Clone Questions Live. I'm Paul, your clone coach. And if you want to make the best clones ever, head over to clonecoach.com today. Thanks, guys.